Now that, for this little antenna, is truly astounding and uh, a lot of uh, my subscribers will have seen the kind of access points that I can pick up here in my lab but that really is astounding and if we just take a look at uh, this particular access point here now that particular access point what I normally do with a directional antenna if it gets uh, to about 50% then that antenna is worth merit and worth exploring and this one is uh, well over the 50% mark really is a nice little antenna so some of you may remember this uh, little antenna from uh, a couple of videos ago now where I took apart a uh, all-in-one system with uh, a built-in Wi-Fi card and antenna for uh, 2.4 gigahertz I wasn't so impressed with the uh, Wi-Fi card but uh, this antenna has turned out to be a really really strong performing antenna and I'm extremely impressed in how uh, good this is basically and uh, at the beginning of the video you saw me testing this one now this one is built in uh, exactly the same way as this one but it's got an extra director on here so uh, in theory it should have a little bit more gain than this one and uh, as I said in that little short clip there uh, the uh, Wi-Fi access point that I clicked on normally if I'm uh, designing some different uh, antennas, you know, directional antennas, I aim to get about 50% uh, with that access point. And uh, if I do, then, uh, you know, it shows merit as an antenna. But this one really kicked that out of the park there and uh, was a lot higher than the 50%. So what I thought we'd do in this video is I've made a template so you can make one of these at home. And um, I've also made uh, some copper elements here and I've also made some out of uh, some uh, galvanized steel that I had lying around this here now this one is made from galvanized steel so we're going to make one out of copper and uh, hopefully the copper is a little bit more conductive and uh, should perform a little bit better so here is a template that I've made of uh, the original antenna then and uh, you can download this and uh, use the template to cut out your own shapes basically we've got two different antennas here we've got the uh, normal one here with uh, the uh, round director here uh, just like this one here so they're all the same size but I've also because this is a Yagi based antenna I want to experiment with uh, smaller sizes as you sometimes see on a Yagi antenna and uh, there's so many different types of Yagi antennas out there some have uh, you know increase in directors where some of the uh, directors in the elements are all the same size so I thought it'd be good to uh, experiment a little bit with a network analyzer with the different shapes but basically all you have to do is uh, cut these shapes out from the template stick them to uh, either the copper like uh, this one here and cut them out now for the copper you want uh, 0.5 millimeters if you have 0.5 millimeters then you can use a pair of scissors to cut it out this copper here is 0.7 millimeters and it's just a little bit thick to use scissors you have to use some uh, tin snips with this here or you could uh, use recycled uh, cookie tins I mean uh, it's not copper and it doesn't have the uh, conductivity electrical conductivity of copper but uh, it's still a uh, viable uh, material use. I mean, this one here is galvanized steel, and you've seen how well this one uh, performs. But uh, cookie tins are also a good resource for uh, making these antennas as well, especially if you just want to build one, see if it works, and then uh, invest a little bit more money in uh, building it out of copper. Now, there is a bit of a uh, big debate when it comes to Yargis on whether you should isolate your boom or not. Now, if you uh, take a look at the original antenna, this was not isolated basically uh, you know the uh, directional the director element here is connected with the uh, reflector and the main driven element now the one that you saw me testing at the beginning of the video this one is uh, all isolated and as I said I've never seen any real difference between the two so that's completely up to you and the materials that you've got whether you want to uh, you know isolate it or not we'll possibly do a future video where I build two identical ones and uh, put them through the paces on the network analyzer but uh, as I said I've never seen any real difference uh, between the two it's just up to you what materials you've got to uh, build your argy
so i'm not going to go too much over the uh, build of this as i said cutting out the elements that's pretty uh, self-explanatory as i said if you want to use copper try and get some uh, 0.5 millimeter it's just much easier to work with so first of all i'm going to put uh, an antenna together with the uh, decreasing elements here and uh, we'll check that out over on the network analyzer and give it a quick wi-fi scan as well and see how well that works and then we'll build one with the uh, you know the all the elements the directional director elements all the same size and we'll compare the two so because uh, i'm going to build this where the boom is not isolated i've got some uh, m4 threaded bar here and we can cut off the excess that we don't want at the end but uh, i've got a nice little uh, nylon locking nut here so that's going to go on the end And then we're going to put our first element on and we're going to use one of the spacers these are five millimeter spacers nylon spacers now for the next element and that one so basically this uh, element here is the same size as uh, this one on here and then they go down decreasing so uh, we get to the end where we've got a really small one here and uh, this is typical of a yagi as i said you get them with decreasing elements or you can get them with uh, elements all the same size so next we're going to have to tin up uh, the uh, solder points that we're going to solder the coax to so this is the main driven element here i've cleaned up around the hole a little bit to uh, get a nice clean surface to uh, surface to solder to now even though i've got a uh, adjustable soldering iron even the uh, 0.5 mil copper is uh, quite difficult to solder to because it will just draw away the heat so a little way to get around that is to use a small blowtorch and heat up the copper before you start applying it with your soldering iron and that way you'll get your copper to flow nicely around there and you'll be able to tin it up a lot easier than just using the soldering iron on its own and we've just got to do the same to the reflector now So now I'm ready to uh, connect up the main driven element, but uh, I'm not ready at this point to uh, connect it up to the rest of the antenna. It's uh, a lot easier to do it this way that I'm showing you. Now, I've got a little bolt here. Again, uh, it fits through the uh, spacer here. So I've got the spacer there, and I'm going to put the driven element into place. Like so, and I'm going to lock that down with the nut i'm going to solder the coax in place here and then i've got exactly the right distance with uh, the coax in between there so it's not bent like uh, it is there it'll be nice and evenly uh, connected up there and then i can remove this bolt and then add both of these elements to the main boom on the uh, little yagi antenna so now it's nicely supported there so i can get in there with a the soldering iron solder this in place and the only the soldering part of this is uh, the thing that i have to worry about because it's all nicely lined up with the correct distance between the uh, driven element and the reflector there so now it's just a matter of connecting both of these elements to the rest of the boom so i'm going to mark off the amount of this threaded bar that i want to uh, cut away so i want to leave a little bit protruding just so i can uh, fasten one of these uh, nylon uh, spacers in place again this is all m4 so now that we've got all this connected up what i've got here is the little bracket and i've got an m4 uh, bolt here i'm just going to screw that down into this spacer to connect this all up so for the first test then i thought we'd test the uh, one that you saw right at the beginning of the video and i did that wi-fi scanning test with just uh, two directors on there it's basically a clone of the original one and uh, for this test i've stuck some extra directors on there the same amount of directors that uh, are on the copper one and we're getting a nice frequency response over here 
on the network analyzer. Now I think we're going to have to do a little bit more uh, tweaking here. I don't know if adding those uh, extra directors have uh, changed the frequency response any. I've got a feeling that it has. And uh, we may have to tweak the driven element of this antenna slightly. But uh, here we've got 2.45 gigahertz, which is uh, roughly the middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum. And uh, we've got 2.48, 2.5 gigahertz, uh, 2.45 gigahertz just here. But the main dip of the frequency response is all the way down here. And uh, that's at 2.5 gigahertz so it's slightly off the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum so we want it shifting this way just a little bit and that's uh, quite a nice frequency response but it is quite uh, wide in its uh, range of uh, working there along that spectrum we just need to shift this a little bit here so we'll set it back at uh, 2.43 gigahertz there so that's roughly about the uh, bang on center of the Wi-Fi spectrum so possibly adding the extra directors as I say has knocked it off slightly its uh, center frequency so next I've got the slightly modified one the one with the uh, decreasing uh, directors and you can see the output on the network analyzer it's pretty good but we've shifted just a little bit so we've shifted things a little bit this is the uh, best response that uh, we've got with uh, this antenna but it's slightly too uh, low for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz this is the 2.4 gigahertz here which uh, is a really good response but if we move the cursor along we've shifted the much better response down a little bit so that's at uh, 2.27 gigahertz there so the decreasing circles have caused it to shift just slightly so possibly if we want to build one with decreasing uh, directors on there like we've got on this one would then have to look at uh, possibly modifying the uh, main driven element a little bit to keep it on centre frequency but although this is uh, quite a uh, broadband antenna it will work uh, quite happily at 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi but as I say we really want this response to be shifted over into this position here so I have to say I am really impressed with this antenna design and it's become one of my new favorite antennas i mean we did get different results from these two on the network analyzer the one with the decreasing elements here the uh, decreasing directors did seem to shift its center frequency slightly compared to this one and off camera i did add the circular ones onto this one and uh, when i uh, hooked it up to the network analyzer i got a similar similar result with this one as i did with this one here and uh, as you saw on the network analyzer it was just slightly off a little bit uh, on its center frequency and uh, i think we can shift that as well um, because it's probably down to accuracy of cutting the uh, elements out with a uh, pair of scissors or tin snips i think if we uh, next do uh, some pcb etching we'll get a much better accuracy with the elements and uh, if we scan it on the network analyzer uh, that may help shift that center frequency because you will get errors doing it like this but uh, as you saw at the beginning of the video when I uh, did a uh, Wi-Fi scan with this one here it really did perform really well and if it were performing that well when its center of frequency was off slightly how well is it going to perform when we manage to bring that back in line and as far as the decreasing elements on here with this one uh, shifting uh, even more off its center frequency off camera i did use these copper ones here to uh, make it the same as this one here and remove these elements and when i did that we did get a uh, similar frequency response to this one here so if we are going to go with the decreasing elements then uh, probably going to have to uh, modify the driven element slightly whether it needs to be uh, you know slightly bigger or slightly smaller uh, to bring that back in line i don't know but uh, it's also uh, you know whether it's worth doing that uh, any benefit at all having the decreasing elements over the uh, all the elements at the uh, same uh, diameter here i don't know whether there's going to be any real benefit for that but uh, in a completely separate video i also want to do an experiment where we uh, see how many of these directors we can add before we have a uh, power drop off so that'll be a video 
on its own just to see how many of these we can add before it has a uh, negative effect on the performance of the antenna. So as I say I'll put the uh, PDF in the description below if you want to have a go at making one of these and uh, as it is now it's uh, certainly a uh, nice performing little uh, Wi-Fi antenna especially this design here and uh, you know have a go at making one and let us know how you get on so uh, if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.